Hey plant gang, uh, this is a plant that I feel compelled to talk about, but I don't really like it that much. This is Euonymus fortunii, winter creeper Euonymus. Uh, and here we're actually in a spot at the State Botanical Garden of Tennessee where we've tried to eradicate it unsuccessfully. Uh, and it continues to come back as a very hard plant to get rid of uh, once it's established. Uh, it can be a ground cover or a vine. Again, Euonymus fortunii, uh, winter creeper Euonymus. And one of the reasons it's so tough is that at every node, it can actually root as it lays down on the ground. So it's quite successful. Uh, now, uh, there are potentially places that I would plant this. Uh, maybe a parking lot median, uh, where it's completely contained and I can get absolutely nothing else to grow there. Uh, perhaps an ornamental cultivar, something with variegation or fancy colored leaves um, might be a good one. But man, we have problems with it uh, in this garden, uh, getting rid of it over time. Uh, in the past, it was really seen as a uh, fast moving, uh, good ground cover that really covers uh, an area, uh, but really, one of the main problems is that if you ever wanted to get rid of it, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, I'm actually standing next to a tree here where uh, once it, it's gotten to this tree, it has started to climb up this tree, uh, which is not a good situation. Again, Euonymus fortunii, the winter creeper Euonymus. This is a herbaceous, uh, kind of a woody ground cover perennial, hardy from zones four through nine, so it can uh, grow and uh, be uh, invasive in almost all parts of the United States. Uh, again, hardy from zones four through nine. Uh, gets just about a half of a foot uh, tall, but can spread out very wide. Again, rooting at every node. For ID characteristics, take a look. It's got oppositely arranged foliage on a green stem. Uh, the bloom is really pretty indescript, but it is kind of a greenish white bloom. It prefers full sun to part shade. It can actually handle deep shade uh, Really, it needs to be uh, used only very judiciously. In particular, keep it out of native woodlands. Uh, but once it's established in those areas, it really is a hard thing uh, to uh, get rid of if you needed to. Uh, it is listed typically, you see it listed as tolerant to the juglands of black walnuts. So maybe that's, that's one of the situations where you may potentially consider it. Uh, although I would probably think about that pretty hard before I did it. Uh, easily grown, of course, in average medium moisture, well-drained sun, uh, well-drained soil in full sun to full, sh even sh really shady situations like I mentioned before. Uh, it is a plant that has a variety of cultivars uh, from yellow variegation to purple leaves. Uh, so a variety of different ones that you can find out on the market. It is still actively being sold even though uh, it does have quite an invasive nature to it. Uh, but look out for this one and uh, make sure that you do know it. Uh, so we do see in certain landscape situations um, this also putting on fruit and the fruit uh, is born in this capsule it's kind of and it's got a little red seed that's kind of a hearts of Buston type seed uh, that can actually increase its invasiveness in places where uh, you do see this thing uh, both flower and fruit. Here's a landscape tip. If used as an ivy-like climbing vine for covering walls chimneys or fences, it more easily flowers and sets seed that can increase its invasive spread.